Welcome to another tutor short provided by the Educational Support Services Department of Lehigh Carbon Community College in Snexville, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Allentown. These videos review key learnings for the science courses provided here at LTRIC. And please remember that the Educational Support Services Department does provide walk in tutoring five days a week. This video will review the basic naming conventions that we use for ionic and covalent compounds in chemistry. I'll start at the bottom here just to, to let you know that I um, will review how to deal with transition metals and ionic compounds on the next slide in this video and that for polyatomic ions and acids I'll have a separate video that you can look up and use. But if we start with basic ionic compounds, ionic compounds are a metal and a nonmetal combined together. And the naming convention is the metal is just um, stated its full name. And then as a second term, you will state the nonmetal root plus uh, you'll end it with IDE. And I'll show you the first example is sodium chloride. You name the metal strictly sodium and the nonmetal here is chlorine and you take the root of chlorine which is chlor C -L -O -C -H -L -O -R, and add in an IDE as an ending so it's sodium chloride when you move on the next example you'll see lithium sulfide you notice the metal you still just say the, the full metal name lithium you do not have to address the subscript that there's two. Um, and then for sulfur over here, the nonmetal, the root is SULF, and then you add the IDE, so sulfide. Um, and then the last example I have, aluminum oxide. Again, you just state the metal. You don't worry about the subscript. And also here on the um, nonmetal, you do not worry about the subscript. You, um, you're representing oxygen here. This, the root is OX, and you add your IDE for aluminum oxide. And um, so the subscripts um, don't come into naming uh, on ionic compounds. That's basically because you can look at the, uh, the charges of uh, um, base charges of aluminum and oxygen and you uh, you know aluminum oxide must be Al2O3 it's the only way it can be formed um, so you don't need to show uh, any representation of the subscripts now when we go to covalent there you do um, have to in some way address the subscripts and so covalents are nonmetals with another nonmetal the prefix here in green, that's how you address the uh, sub, sub, um, subscripts in the uh, elements. So like for down, down here in SF6, you're going to deal with the 6 with the, uh, in some way with a prefix. Prefix is, can be on either term, the first or the second. Uh, and then the next one down here, you'll see a, with a 2 and a 5, we're going to have to deal with those prefix, uh, those subscripts. So let's look at our first one, nitrogen uh, oxide. Uh, we have NO. Because the subscripts here are both one, um, you do not need to use the prefix mono. Uh, mono represents one, uh, but if um, the, noma, the basic um, nomenclature uh, for uh, covalent compounds, you don't need to use mono. Uh, it's in, if you don't see a term, it's implied that it's mono. So you don't have to say mononitrogen. It's just nitrogen. Same thing on the second term. It's oxygen uh, with the, uh, the root with the IDE ending. So it's oxide. You don't have to say mono. Now, you will obviously come across some exceptions. And a very common one that you know, I'm sure you'll deal with in your science classes is CO, which is carbon monoxide. And there they do use um, the mon uh, for monoxide. But that's just uh, a long time use. Uh, it's not really following the naming uh, convention, um, but it's just been used so much uh, over the years that everybody uh, uses it, that term. 
Uh, so that is one exception. Uh, and there are a few others occasionally you may come across with the uh, model term. So now we look at the next example we have here. Um, sulfur with six fluorines. Again, because sulfur is a single uh, element there, you just use the full term of sulfur. But now on the, f um, the fluorine, you're going to use a prefix, hexa, it represents six. Your root for fluorine is F-L-U-O-R, fluor, and then your IDE ending. So it's sulfur hexafluoride. And our final example here for our covalence is uh, N2O5. Here you need to use your prefix of dinitrogen, and you're going to use your pentoxide or pentaoxide. So your prefix, your root, and your ending there, suffix of IDE. So if we now move over to our second um, convention here, and I wanted to get rid of this. There we go. Um, if we have a transition metal in our ionic compound, transition metals, um, most of them or some of them can have more than one oxidation state. And so you need to uh, address that in the naming. So for transition metals, you, you will name the metal, but you also have to give some indication of what the oxidation state is. And you do that with a Roman numeral. And then again, you end with your, your non-metal root and your IDE. So in our first example with iron um, chloride, you want to say, you have iron and chlorine. In this case, iron here is iron 3, which is Fe plus 3. That's the uh, oxidation state of iron in this case. And so you have iron 3, your Roman numeral 3 here, uh, chloride, the root and the IDE suffix. The next example, we have CUS. In this case, it's copper 2 uh, sulfide. And uh, the copper here represents uh, its oxidation state as plus 2. If you notice in the next example, Cu2S, here the oxidation state of copper is plus 1. And so it's copper 1 sulfide. So by doing the 1 and the 2, uh, you, can rep you will know whether you have Cus or Cu2S. So it's important when you have a transition metal with uh, multiple oxidation states that you introduce um, this Roman numeral convention. Uh, and then again, as I mentioned, uh, we'll have another video here on polyatomic ions and, and also on naming acids. Thank you.